Which side are you on now? Which side are you on? Which side are you on now? Which side are you on? We won't stay neutral, we will take a stand In this great old nation, organize a plan Which side are you on now? Which side are you on? Hello, everybody. Thank you so much for joining us tonight for the Unite Our Fight rally hosted by West Virginia Can't Wait, brand new Congress, and of course, Paula Jean Swearingen for U.S. Senate. Tonight, we're going to be talking to some amazing movers and shakers across the country, people who have ran for office and refused to take a single dime in corporate PAC money, people that are fighting for legislation and policies that really work for regular working Americans across this country. For far too long, our representatives haven't worked for us, and that's why we're coming together tonight, because we're going to talk to you about how we together can change our country and unite our fight for something better. My name is Zainab Day, and I am with Brand New Congress, in 2016, Brand New Congress is founded on an idea that regular working people can run for Congress. We did a call across the country for nominations and thousands of nominations poured in. And you guys asked us who, you guys told us who you would like to run for office in your states. And in those nominations, we received a nomination for Paula Jean Swearingen in West Virginia. Paula, at that time, was already a mover and shaker in the state of West Virginia fighting for the people. But she hadn't considered running for office. She hadn't considered running for the Senate. But you know what? She heard you, and she took up the call. And she ran a people-funded campaign. She was the first in the state of West Virginia and one of the first in the United States to run on zero corporate PAC dollars, to run on health care as a human right, to run on economic diversity and true workers' rights. Paula Jean, Paula Jean Swearingen has inspired literally a movement. In 2020, when we did our nominations call at Brand New Congress, we had, again, thousands of nominations poured in, but we found something new. What we found is hundreds of people were inspired to run across the country because of people like Paula Jean, and Paula Jean specifically. They looked at her and they thought, here's a single mom. Here's someone who works a minimum wage job. Here's someone that's lived our struggles, and she has the nerve and the audacity and the gall and the gumption to run for office, and we're going to do it too. Because you know what? Regular working people can represent regular working people, and it's time that the partisan elite step aside and allow us to take our government back, and that's exactly what Paula Jean stood for. In 2018, she broke all the records in West Virginia in her Democratic primary by having the highest highest Democratic primary turnout in 75 years. In 2020, she won her primary, and now she's moving on to the general election to take on Shelley Moore Capito. And you know what? It's about time that we have representatives like Paula. I want to tell you, when I first met Paula, I'm from Appalachia myself. I'm from Kentucky in southeastern Kentucky. In Kentucky deep in coal country. Right now, a coal train runs behind my house every single day. Paula Jean inspired me because she knew what it was like for our waters to run orange. She knew what it was like to live with the boom and bust of, of the coal industry and see our windows boarded up. She knew what it was like for federal funding to be cut more and more for our small business owners. And when I talked to her, I felt like I was talking to a piece of home. I felt like maybe for once, I can have a representative, we could all have a representative that will be fighting for us in Appalachia, that will be truly on Capitol Hill, not funded by corporations, who will not be beholden to the lobbyists that come knocking on her door, but will talk to the coal miner 
who will come sit in her office. And that's what we need. This is the change that we're looking for. And Paula Jean has inspired this movement. And that takes us to today, to today in 2020, with the amazing women from West Virginia Can't Wait. We have broken all records in this state with four women on our ticket for federal office. A hundred years ago, we asked for the right to vote, and women came out and protested and showed up, and we fought for that right. Now, a hundred years later, four women are rent running on the ticket in West Virginia, and all four are refusing to take a single dime in corporate PAC money. All four have signed a pledge to stand up for a better West Virginia, for economic diversity, for health care for all so that our children can have a better future, so that we can have a better future. So without further ado, I would like to introduce you to Natalie Turner, Na I'm sorry, Natalie Klein, Hillary Turner, Paula Jean, and Kathy Kunkel. These women are amazing, and they're gonna shake up Washington as soon as they come banging those doors down. In, in November, they're going to win. In January, they're gonna be sitting in the halls of Congress together. And you know what? They're gonna fight for legislation that's written by the people of West Virginia, for the people of West Virginia, for the people of Appalachia, so that we can take this fight forward. We only have 24 days left before this election. So I'm urging each and every single one of you, if you have not registered Register to vote, please register to vote in West Virginia by Tuesday, so we've only got two days left. Also, please sign up to get your voter registration, to get your um, early voting ballot if you need that, or find out where your early voting polling locations are going to be. Because you know what? These women are up there fighting for us, they are us, and they deserve our vote. And each and every single voter in this slate, we can take our, we can take our state back, we can take our government back, and we can make real change. And to make real change, it's going to take all of us. Thank you. Wild and wonderful West Virginia. It's the fields my family has been farming on for six generations. It's the community that I returned to to raise my son. It's the land whose natural resources provided my family with jobs. It's the place I moved to for work, fell in love with, and never left. It's the mountain state we proudly call home. And this November, we're the first all-female ticket in West Virginia history. Running to represent this wild and wonderful state in Washington, D.C. I'm Natalie Klein. I'm Kathy Kunkel. I'm Hillary Turner. And I'm Paula Jean Swearingen. United by a fierce love of our fellow West Virginians. And ready to fight like hell for them in Washington. Our loyalty is to our communities, and it's not up for sale. For too long, we've been promised change that never comes. But West Virginia can't wait any longer. We'll fight for universal health care, union jobs, and living wages. We'll fight for broadband access across our state so that our children can stay connected to school. We'll fight for clean energy, environmental protections, and economic diversity. And we will fight to get our roads fixed because when we work together, there's no limit to the places we can go. It's time for the next chapter in our history. And we won't let it be told by corporations or career politicians. It'll be written by real West Virginians and by all West Virginians. Like me. And me. And you. I am Paula Jean Swearingen, and I approve this message. So hi everyone, I am so excited about this panel. West Virginia is making history, y'all. This is the first time since women have been voting Every Democratic nominee for Congress, first, second, third in the United States Senate are women. And I'm really proud to sit on this stage with this set of women. We have Natalie Klein. She is um, running for the first district and she's our Democratic nominee. We have Kathy Kunkel who's running for the second and Hillary Turner for the third. And we're just gonna have a conversation about how we got here, 
um, why this has happened, why we are building a movement here in West Virginia. Um, we have been building national and local movements. And here in West Virginia with the West Virginia Can't Wait movement, we had 93 candidates to run in the primary. 43 of those candidates won, and all four of us are ready to bust the halls of Congress wide open and make sure that West Virginia has a seat at the table. And you've heard me say it, and I'll say it again, West Virginia women do stick together. And I, you know, we stick behind democratic values, all of us are Democrats, but this is not about partisan politics anymore. This is about us standing up for each other, we're in the fight for our lives, and we're standing up to make sure that we have a government of the people, for the people, and by the people. And I know every one of these women will fight for every child in this state and every child in this country and make sure that we do have a good future for them for a change. So I'm just going to open up the conversation um, and let these women talk about their race and we'll just go ahead and start here with Natalie. Thank you for that. I'm Natalie Klein. I'm running for U.S. House of Representatives for West Virginia's first district and thank you so much for having us here today. This is fantastic and Paula Jean's right. We are sticking together. We are uniting together because we are passionate about our state and we are here to fight for every single one of our children like they are our own. My child is my inspiration for running. I chose to move back to West Virginia after living in DC for about five years when my son was two years old. I wanted him to be raised with the same West Virginia values I was raised with in the 80s growing up here. I wanted him to know his family and I wanted him to know what it was like to grow up in a close knit community. And I couldn't believe that a place that made me who I am was causing such culture shock after I'd only been gone for five years. So when I, the longer I looked at his cohort and saw how much they are victims of the opioid epidemic in West Virginia, the more I thought we have to do something and we have to do something now. This is a failure at every level of government in our state and we need real people with real ideas and a vision for our state to step up and fight for it like every single one of these kids is their child. I'm Kathy Kunkel. I'm running for U.S. House in the second congressional district in West Virginia to be part of West Virginia Can't Wait and this movement of dozens of candidates who have pledged to not take corporate money in our campaigns in West Virginia this year, which to me is just so critically important in a state that has been dominated by outside industry for decades, for over a century. You know, our, our state's wealth has been extracted and we've perpetually been one of the poorest states in the country. And it's really exciting to be part of this movement of people who are saying enough is enough and we are gonna fight for healthcare for all, for well-funded public education, for infrastructure and for labor rights uh, and to make uh, West Virginia uh, strong and revitalize our economy here. I'm Hillary Turner and I'm running for U.S. Congress in West Virginia's third district and I'm also uh, really happy to be here um, with these strong women. Um, you know, this is such a historic time for West Virginia and for women, a hundred years after women got the right to vote. You know, we are standing up and saying enough is enough. We're going to take back our country. We're going to take back our communities and our state. And we're here to fight for the people of our state and to fight for our communities and uh, make sure that we all have health care and, you know, that we have good jobs with a living wage and workers' rights. And I'm also really happy to be a part of the West Virginia campaign weight movement and um, the fact that we've all pledged to not take corporate money is such a huge um, accomplishment and message um, to uh, the political establishment that has you know been corrupted um, that has kept regular people out of the process and um, and we're just trying to you know bridge that gap there and say we're regular people we're moms you know, we're working class, we're fighting for, um, you know, we're fighting for the working and middle class um, families of West Virginia. And, um, and that hasn't really been done um, to, to the degree that it's being done now. And to, to do so with such powerful women um, leading the way is, is such an amazing thing. So I think the people of West Virginia are, have been excited about that. Um, so let's talk about our opponents for a second. Um, I'll go ahead and start with mine. Shelley Moore Capito was one of the first, was the first woman to be elected to the United States Senate to represent the state of West Virginia. 
and uh, she's done nothing really except get legislation passed for commemorative coins. She is bought and paid for by corporations and lobbyists, and um, she's a mother and grandmother like me. Um, she's voted against equal pay for women at least three times. She's tried to privatize and turn Medicare into a voucher program, which would be very detrimental to the elderly in our state. And uh, she, she's a mother and grandmother. And somebody needs to ask the hard question, why does she turn a blind eye to the children dying and starving in this state? Um, this election is a really personal one for me because this, I'm a mother and grandmother, and this is a grandma fight. I am fighting for my, ch my children and my grandchild now. Um, so let's start with uh, you again, Natalie. What makes you different from your opponent outside of that corporate PAC money? Um, I don't think we have enough time to answer that. There's a lot that makes me different. Um, I'm not independently wealthy. I haven't had everything handed to me. I know what it's like to have to work and pull yourself up from your bootstraps. I know what it's like to have insurmountable student loan debt and medical bills. I know what it's like to be sick and trying at the same time that you're trying to get an education and trying to work and there's not ever enough money left at the end of the month to pay all of your bills. I know what that's like. He does not. Also, I am not taking corporate PAC money, neither are these ladies here, and all my opponent has to do is wake up every morning, and when he does, more money gets put into his bank account. So who do you think he's going to prioritize when legislation hits his desk? The legislation that can potentially benefit these corporations, these pharmaceutical industries, that the pharmaceutical companies, I'm sorry, that have continued to pump pills into our state targeting our state and knowing that we were a perfect target for opioid addiction. It's time that somebody do something about that. And I'm here to make that change. Yeah. Well, you know, I think there's a lot of uh, common themes here when we talk about our opponents. And Congressman Mooney uh, is a career politician. Um, he has spent his whole life, I think, doing the bidding of corporate interests and certainly not the people of West Virginia um, in large part because he was originally not elected in West Virginia. Um, but when he lost his state Senate seat in Maryland, uh, he moved right across the border into West Virginia uh, to buy a, a state uh, or buy a federal house seat uh, here in West Virginia in 2014. And he has since spent very little time uh, in the district. Um, he's never held a town hall since he was first elected in 2014. Um, and, you know, it shows that he just thinks he can continue to be reelected by doing the bidding of his corporate donors and getting their funding. He gets 90% of his funding from out of state. He sits on the House Financial Services Committee, gets all this Wall Street PAC money. Um, and you see it in his voting record. He's voted time and again against the Affordable Care Act. He's voted against health care for people with pre-existing conditions in this pandemic. Uh, he voted against uh, the bill for free COVID testing, and he was... Uh, in a hearing in the House arguing that we shouldn't be uh, you know, tightening restrictions on debt collectors. So it's clear where his priorities lie and they're not the priorities of the people of West Virginia. Um, so Carol Miller has a lot of uh, common themes as well with you all's um, opponents. Her dad was a, a congressman and, um, you know, she was born wealthy. She's a multimillionaire. Um, she hasn't really had to work. Um, and so I just, you know, pose the question of how can she really relate to the working families of West Virginia and what our needs are and what our struggles are and what it's like to struggle to pay a bill or to worry about how you're going to uh, afford medicine or health care for your family. Um, she has voted uh, to defund the Black Lung Fund. And I just wonder, how can you do that? How can you say, I'm pro coal, but I'm going to defund the Black Lung Fund because she's hurting these retired miners that gave their life uh, to, to that industry. And um, she, she voted against um, the second coronavirus aid bill, the HEROES Act. Um, at the same time, she took, and a lot of Congress people did that, and they tried to keep it secret, they, she took $5 million in PPP loans for her own personal business. So she's not you know, morally against taking federal tax dollars um, to help herself, but then she said no you know, to, take, to using federal tax dollars to help the 
families of West Virginia that are struggling the most to keep a roof over their head and to put food on their table and to afford health care. Um, so again, I just say, you know, she has been privileged her whole life and uh, it, it hasn't changed. She hasn't, you know, she she can't relate with the people of West Virginia. We need representation in Washington that can relate, of people that can relate to uh, just normal working people and uh, and what it's like to struggle. Um, you know, I have so many people tell me that they tried to write a letter to Carol, they tried to get her on the phone, they tried to send an email, never get a personal response back. I'm doing the opposite. I'm I'm getting out there. I'm talking to people. I'm listening to their concerns. I'm putting in the hard work, and that's what I would do in Congress: is you know put in the hard work and listen to people and care about their needs, um, rather than just be uh, beholden to large corporate interests. So. So I think that's the theme across the country. I mean, let's talk openly on it, and I want you to talk about anything that you want to talk about. But the theme across the country with brand new Congress, West, West Virginia can't wait. This is like the heart of labor, you know, and West Virginians, we have been organizing since the origination of labor. We've seen in the 2018 teacher strike. And I know with all these women on this panel that we're not here because we want to be career politicians. It's about survival for West Virginians. And we just keep on standing up and fighting back. And so this is an appeal to West Virginians tonight. And I go ask my neighbor, I, I tell this story all the time, if I ask him for a wrench, he doesn't ask me if I'm a Democrat or Republican. He breaks his wrench and he helps me. And I appeal to the West Virginians that I know and I love. We can have true representation this time. All of us have fought for this moment in time. I have advocated for our state for a long time just to have true representation so we won't be 49th and 50th in opportunity anymore. Get out and vote. Tell your neighbors to vote. We don't have to agree on everything, but we do agree that nothing has changed for us to, it, for decades. We can walk out our doors and see nothing has changed. And our children deserve a future here. And we just want a chance to be public servants. We're women, we're mothers. We just want to do the right thing for West Virginia. It's a sacrifice to run for office, and we're willing to sacrifice so we can make West Virginia better. Y'all donate, please. <laughs> Please, every dollar counts, and uh, we definitely need volunteers. Yes, so you can find us online at natalieklineforcongress.com, and there's a donate button on there. We're also on Facebook with at Natalie Klein for Congress, and I'm on Twitter at Natalie Klein WV. All right. Well, for me, I mean, I've heard you say this before too, Paula Jean, but I never would have imagined myself running for U.S. House one day, but I've been very involved in community work uh, in Charleston for a number of years in the fight for safe drinking water after a chemical spill back in 2014 and advocating for health care and for better services for folks struggling with addiction in our community. And, you know, it's time to bring those fights to the federal level. It's time to take on uh, a political establishment that just doesn't seem to care about us. And, you know, I hear a lot of people say that, you know, they're not that interested in voting and they, you know, they don't think that voting changes anything. And, there's a real, there's some real truth to that. But if we're going to build a government that truly does work for all of us and represents all of us, it's going to take all of us getting involved and not just voting, but also donating and helping candidates uh, that you support. So uh, for us, uh, you can find us at kunkelforcongress.com. And our volunteers are making 100,000 phone calls and texts to voters by election day. So if you want to sign up to help with that, you can sign up to volunteer again at kunkelforcongress.com. Running as a mom, I have a two-year-old daughter, and so running for a federal office right now is not an easy task um, to juggle both of those roles. Um, but ultimately, you know, I I'm in this to fight for um, her interests and the interests of our children and their futures. And you know, it's important to me as a mom to make sure that we address climate change, that we protect our water, that we pass universal health care. If you'd like to help us out, uh, you can go to my website. Um, you can go to hillaryturner.com. You can make a donation through there. Um, every little bit helps. Uh, you can also sign up to volunteer. Uh, we also need help with phone banking and text banking and um, just getting out the vote. And just to all of our opponents and to give them a public shout out, West Virginia cannot wait for a debate. 
Part of democracy is making sure that constituents hear from all sides. And now since our opponents have West Virginians, ordinary West Virginians running against them, they're treating us like they did before we were the nominees for Congress and we are not being heard. So reach out to McKinley, Mooney, Shelley Moore Capito, and Carol Miller and tell them that West Virginia wants a debate. And it would be an honor to serve with you in Congress and thank you all for everything that you're doing for us in West Virginia. I was born in these hills. Our system is broken. How long are we gonna sit back and take it? How long before we actually take it? We will have Medicare for all. We won't back down until our workers are protected. Our public schools will be fully funded and supported. It is time to have a campaign for U.S. Senate in West Virginia ran by the people. I am Paula Jean Swearingen, and I approve this message. Hey guys, welcome back. That video was amazing. Those women are so inspiring and I cannot wait to see each and every single one of them on Capitol Hill. Speaking of the amazing women of West Virginia Can't Wait and of this movement, we have one here tonight. We're proud to introduce and to hear from Katie Lauer. She is from Fayette County, West Virginia and is co-founder of West Virginia Can't Wait. Katie? My guess is if you're watching this video tonight, you're ready to help get candidates like Paula Jean Swearingen elected. You don't need to hear a rally speech from me to know that. It's in your heart already. And so I hope no matter what else you do today, you'll sign up to donate or to volunteer for her campaign. It's easy. You can do it right now. I hope you'll take this moment, this exact one that we're in, and go to her website and get started. Actions, not intentions, are what get candidates elected. So please take an action tonight. My name is Katie Lauer. I am the co-chair of West Virginia Can't Wait, a young and growing movement in West Virginia out to win a people's government. Two years ago, a group of West Virginians got together to answer this question. What would it look like to use the vehicle of elections to build a political machine in West Virginia strong enough to take on the wealthy good old boys club and win? This isn't just a question for West Virginians this year. This is the question of our times. Because our country and our state didn't get into the shape that we're in by accident. Just over 40 years ago, in response to the successes of the labor movement, anti-war movement, and social movements, the 1960s and 1970s, our opponents sat down and created a roadmap for how they would win governing power in the United States. Their plan was to build a new majority of Americans, a majority that could advance their narrative, elect their candidates, and line their pocketbooks. To do this, they would divide us by busting unions, by chipping away at our sense of economic security, and scapegoating brown and black Americans while they got richer. You don't have to look too far to see the consequences. Every West Virginian is working two or three jobs to get by or knows someone who is, while stockholders make record profits. My family is one of the tens of thousands in our state who are worried about whether the water coming out of the taps in our homes is safe to drink, while executives of the companies that poison our water rake in more money. This month, as cannabis growers' permits were doled out in our state, none of us were surprised that out-of-state corporations with ties to the wealthy and well-connected went home with their hands full. And our farmers, who have invested their lives and their livelihoods into their land, got nothing. This is not an accident, and it's not a fluke. It's a political strategy. And to win, to make sure that people like you and me have a decent living, safe water, benefit from new industries. We have to do two things, and this is the most important part, and I hope you'll remember this. One, 
In every action we take, we must remember that our fight is with the wealthy Godo Boys Club and not with each other. Other working people are not our enemies, not young people, not old folks, not folks in rural West Virginia, not folks in cities, not our black, brown, white neighbors, not your uncle, not your coworker. When we fight each other, we lose. When we fight for each other, we win. Two, we must create and invest in our own long-term strategy. We must put our might into building alternative democratic institutions that can contend for power and win. And those two things are exactly what we're doing in West Virginia. Two years in, 101 candidates, including Paula Jean, have signed on to a pledge to reject corporate PAC money, to never cross a picket line, and to never hide from a debate. Half of those same candidates also signed on to a people's platform that we call the New Deal for West Virginia. It contains an education plan that was written by West Virginia educators, a farming plan that was written by West Virginia farmers, a plan for people in recovery written by people in recovery. It's the most ambitious, most vetted, most bottom-up, most bold platform in West Virginia history. Now, 51 of our candidates, led by Paula Jean and three other women on our state's congressional ticket, have advanced to the general. This November, we'll get our first slate of West Virginia Can't Wait candidates into office, and you can help. After you donate to Paula Jean, go to wvcantwait.com and find dozens of other candidates you can support that aren't for sale. To all you organizers out there looking for something like this to build in your home state, I would love to talk to you. Drop me a line. We're turning the lessons we've learned into a framework that can be practiced in other places. And to all you Paula Jean supporters, and by that I mean every single person who's watching right now, now is the time to make a donation to her campaign. Sign up to volunteer, and let's get to work. I just wanted to uh, make a short video to show my support for Paula Jean. Um, she's an unapologetic leader that we need when it comes to issues facing us, uh, things like the Green New Deal, which is something, you know, our, our, uh, we talked about it on an event that we had um, a few weeks ago. I, our country is literally burning on fire, and we need something now. We need to, to switch from a, a coal-based fossil fuel industry to, you know, wind turbines. And I just wanted to say that I couldn't be prouder of the people of West Virginia for making her the nominee uh, to run for Senate. And I'm looking forward to her getting elected so that we can have that unapologetic leader we need, a, a progressive. And please support me by, by helping get her elected. Um, go to her website, look for ways to volunteer. Even a couple dollars would be really helpful. But I hope you all have a fantastic time at this event and practice social distancing, of course. Um, but let's do this. Let's get Paula Jean elected. Thanks. Have a terrific day. Hey, guys. Thank and welcome back. Um, thanks so much again to Katie Lauer and her words about unity holding our representatives accountable and taking power back into our own hands. And also a big shout out to the Iron Stash for pulling in a video for Paula Jean Swearingen and showing his support. Now we would like to introduce Matt Deal with his song, Home. Thank you. Friends didn't seem so hard. I miss the little things, miss a lot of things these days. I miss the little things, miss a lot of things that went away. I wanna go back home, but home's not there anymore. I wanna go back home. Whoa. Did I ever want to grow up for? I want to go back home. Home's not there. 
there anymore I want to go back home Whoa I did ever want to grow up for I remember the park Riding bicycles and swimming until dark Riding into that sunset with all my heart I miss the little things Miss a lot of things these days I miss the little things I miss a lot of things that went away I want to go back home The home's not there anymore I want to go back home Whoa did ever want to grow up for I want to go back home My home's not there anymore I want to go back home Whoa. Did ever want to grow up for I miss the little things I miss a lot of things these days I miss the little things I miss a lot of things that went away I miss the little things, miss a lot of things these days. I miss the little things, I miss a lot of things that went away. I wanna go back home. My home's not there anymore. I wanna go back home. Whoa. What did it ever want? I'll never be sure. Yes, I'll never be sure. Yes, I'll never be sure. Whoa, yes, I'll never be sure. Thank you. I'm so proud to be endorsing Paula Jean Swearingen and grateful to you all for organizing to send her to the United States Senate. We're in an unprecedented moment in American history, facing compounding economic and public health issues uh, as our planet burns. Families in West Virginia and all across our country want something so basic and simple for their children, they almost shouldn't have to say it. They want their children to be able to dream of the future instead of fearing it. That's where we are right now. And if we all do our part, we can elect Paula Jean, a woman <laughs> who represents the very best of grassroots organizing, who will fight tirelessly for West Virginians, who will join in ensuring that everyone gets the funding they need for their families, for their small businesses, all throughout this crisis, and for uh, at least uh, the next year until this crisis is over. That's who she is, that's the work that has to be done, and she'll work every day to deliver a just and sustainable future for every child. Thank you for standing with Paula Jean and with our movement. We can win this and elect the most progressive Congress in history. If West Virginians didn't fight for unions, we would still be using coal script at our local company store. As a coal miner's daughter, I was proud to stand on the picket lines with teachers who fought for benefits and fair pay. The working class should not be an afterthought. We should be a priority. I am Paula Jean Swearingen, and I approve this message because it's time to fight for the protected wages and health care that we all deserve. Remember in November, swear in Swearingen. Just imagine Paula Jean and Ed Markey on Capitol Hill. I cannot wait till they stir up some trouble together. Who we have next at Brand New Congress, we're really looking to build a coalition of people who will stand together and fight together on Capitol Hill. And Paula Jean has been leading the way in inspiring her fellow slate mates at Brand New Congress for years. Today, she's gonna be talking with Charles Booker, and with a shout out from her sister, future Congresswoman Cori Bush. All right, so here is my Kentucky neighbor, our Kentucky neighbor, Charles Booker. How you doing? I'm doing well now that I see you. It's good to be <laughs> with you today. I wish I was there in person. 
That's all right. You got a lot a lot of stuff going on out there. Tell us what's going out and going on in Kentucky. Well, you know, we got our hands full here. Uh, we're still dealing with all across the Commonwealth, the throes of uh, Breonna Taylor and mm -hmm. fighting for justice for all Kentuckians. Um, we're dealing with heightened numbers of COVID cases now. Um, unemployment is at historic levels. And so I'm actually at the Capitol um, because I, I've been dealing with some unemployment cases with people all over Kentucky. So it's a tough time, but you know, we're resilient and we're committed to fighting. And I know we're going to get through all of this. Well, you know, West Virginia, we're going through a lot of the same things and COVID uh, cases keep on rising here too. And, you know, that's what's so beautiful about, you know, you didn't win this time. I hope you run for office again, but that's what's so beautiful is we have Appalachians uniting and this is the Unite Our Fight rally. So thank you for the good fight. Thank you for running for office and thank you for all your public service, Charles. Um, you know, West Virginia appreciates you. We really do. Well, Paula Jean, you know I appreciate you. Uh, you got a lot of us on your shoulders. And listen, although I didn't win at the ballot box, my victory is seeing you and seeing you stand up and tell your story and speak the truth. Because when you speak, you speak for folks that don't get listened to. And, and that is the type of victory we need every single day. And so I'm hopeful, I'm excited. And like I said, I, we'll get you in there and then I'll join you at some point. That's all right, that's all right, I hope so. Um, so let's talk about, you know, this is an Appalachian thing and, you know, we're, we're uniting. Talk about how the stimulus and everything that's went on with Congress with the HEROES Act and the Hills Act. What's going on there in Kentucky? Are you guys suffering as hard as we are here in West Virginia? You know, we, we're, we're being hit hard, um, especially all across Appalachia where infrastructure was already crumbling. You know, folks were already hanging on by thread and, and right. you're seeing the bottom fall out in a lot of ways. And, you know, the relief for not only folks who were losing their jobs, but small businesses that were just, they're investing in the community. Because as you know, those, those mom and pops, those folks are anchors. Mm -hmm. And when they close their doors, it creates a ripple effect that hurts a lot of people. And then, you know, in Kentucky, similar to West Virginia, we have a lot of health issues. I'm a type mm -hmm. one diabetic myself, as you know, and, you know, a lot of us are already dealing with complications. And so it's just a scary time and, and we needed that relief. We need mm -hmm. that relief um, so that we can get through this time and then do the deeper work, you know, cause mm -hmm. we still got a lot of poverty. And, you know, as you and I've talked about, those are the types of pandemics that have been around before COVID. That's right. And so we got to address the, the pain right now so we can do that deeper work. And this is what is, this is about is people in pain should be in front of the power. And it's about getting rid of Shelley Moore Capito, who had the HEROES Act sitting on her desk for three months and didn't do anything about it, came home here um, to do a fat cat fundraiser with Jim Justice, $25,000 a plate and $10,500 for a photo op. When, you know, if it'd been me or you there, they would have had to drag us out kicking and screaming before that the United stimulus package did not go through. Um, and, you know, Kentucky holds a special place in my heart. And I'm so glad to see leaders like you standing up in Kentucky, because I know you guys hurt like we do in West Virginia. We're, you know, West Virginia is one of the poorest and sickest states in the nation. So is Kentucky and so many states in the Appalachian region, because you know, the rug's been pulled out from under us. You know, the biggest lie a politician can tell is coal's gonna rebound because it's not. And we need economic diversity. So, you know, this is a federal race. And, you know, we did suffer the loss not having you, buddy, but we are, we have a whole slate of candidates from a local level here to a federal level with, you know, our BNC slate mates. They're trying to change the whole di dynamic in Congress and also flipping the Senate. And I was proud that you were on that slate too, because I know that they vet their candidates, our candidates serve integrity, and we do not take corporate PAC dollars. We're just ordinary people. And, um, you know, this is, this is a long game for all of us. No matter what happens with this election, we keep on changing the conversation, changing the political dynamic, holding these people accountable, and making sure that we put the government back into the hands of the people and making sure that we have a government that is, as the government body is made of us and not, pe not people that are out of touch, out of focus, and serving corporations and lobbyists. That, that's right. Um we're doing the work to make democracy mean something. That's right. And a lot of people have been ignored and abandoned and kicked off the cliff and left on the tracks. And we're fighting back. 
That's and right. I'm so proud of you. And I'm honored to stand by your side Thank because you. I know it's a whole lot of us and, and we're not going to be defeated. We're going to win this. That's all right. These people ain't going to do their jobs or come to take them point blank. And, I, you know, I've, I've said it over and over and over. Shelly Moore Capito is a mother and a grandmother. And she won't debate me right now. None of our incumbents will debate right now on a congressional level. She's a mother and grandmother. And this is a grandma fight. You know, it's time to make sure that West Virginians and Appalachians have a true seat at the table. And everybody should be asking her. Every mother in Appalachia should be asking her, how does she sleep at night? Because she's turned a blind eye. She, you know, even right now in the middle of this pandemic, trying to push in, you know, money. This is supposed to be a relief package. It's not supposed to be re relief for Wall Street and real estate companies. And that's what these people are doing in D.C. And she's a rubber stamp for Mitch McConnell. It's time for her to go. Well, both of them got to go. And, and that's right. Everything that's you right. said is exactly right. You know, we need people that are going to fight for us and be accountable to us and not be for sale and not turn their backs on us when we need leadership the most. And I, I think the people of West Virginia hear it loud and clear. I, matter of fact, I know it. And I know it's true here in Kentucky as well. We're fighting. And that's right. You know, the types of change we're talking about is really about healing for all of us, mm -hmm. equity and opportunity for mm -hmm. every family to surpass their dreams. We're not asking for much. We're not asking Basic for a lot. We just want human better. rights from the hood to the holler. From the hood to the holler. That's right. Well, Charles, we know that you're real busy. Thank you for taking a minute and talking to us and showing support with West Virginia and showing unity across Appalachia. If you need anything from West Virginia, we got your back. Uh, you know that's a two-way street. I look forward to seeing you. We'll be marching together here and there. That's and right. uh, you, you run strong, and, and let's bring this thing home. That's all right. Thank you, Charles. Have a good day. Of course. Thank you. Her name is Paula Jean Swearinger, and I support her in her run for U.S. Senate for West Virginia. The time is now. There's no more time to lose. You have to stand up and show out. So what we need you to do to make sure that you secure that vote, to make sure that Paula Jean Swearingen is your next U.S. Senator, grab 10 people and bring them with you. Bring them with you to help volunteer. We need people, if you're knocking, if she's knocking doors, knock doors. If she's lit dropping, lit drop. If she's on the phones, then we need you on the phones. We need everybody working together because you only get one chance to get this done and to do it right. So will you stand up? Will you help? Will you grab other people? Will you mobilize for Paula Jean? Yes, I hope you will. So she needs you and she needs you right now. Remember, November 3rd is the end. It's the last day that you can show up. So. Let's get this done for Paula Jean. You know, that's my sister. I write you all. Charles Booker always gets me going when he's talking about unity from the hood to the holler. Organizers have been writing songs and musicians have been writing songs about the movement for generations. And right now, we're really proud to introduce a song by Leah Rose, we are the ones. Thank you for having me on with all of these incredible, inspiring humans. Um, Paula Jean, thank you for all that you do. You're fighting for ordinary, everyday people, for working people, for families, and I thank you. <laughs> um, I also want to say that the revolution's happening on so many levels right now. So these elections up and down the ballot, super important. Um, and all the other ways in the streets, in the classrooms, behind the scenes, it's all happening simultaneously. And that's the beauty of it. Um, there's no one thing that's going to work. It's this movement of movements that's making it happen. Um, like Nina Turner said, it's ordinary people. It's, it's all of us. Um, we're all digging in and like finding our superpowers. Um, using them to literally change the course of history right now uh, in the face of insanity. Um, so we got to get Paula Jean in there because she's going to fight hard for us. Um, this is a song I'm going to play um, called We Are The Ones We've Been Waiting For that my friend um, Ryan Harvey and I wrote together. And let me get it started. If not now children grow up, will you pass it to them? 
Tell them you were scared to stand up back then. If not now, then when? Is it too much to ask for a life free of hate? A place to call home and a dignified wage? Who here will fight for the world we deserve? Because we are the ones we know. Take the bold steps that we have to And the difference will be What we do or don't do If not us, then who? Is it too much to ask For a life free of hate? A place to call home And a dignified wage? Who here will fight For the world we deserve? Cause we are the ones we know Just gonna sit on the side while it happens again After so many years of talking, my friend If not now, then when? And who here among us will stand up and fight? Organize bravely and walk out on strike We know that actions speak louder than words And we are the ones we know we are the ones we've been waiting for. We are the ones we've been waiting for. In a state with a sinking economy, we are still turning away economic opportunities for our workers. This includes the cannabis industry. Colorado has taken in well over a billion dollars in tax revenue. And where is West Virginia? Last in line for progress, as usual. My name is Paula Jean Swearingen, and I approve this message because it's time to build an economic future that West Virginians deserve. Remember, in November, swear in Swearingen. Most West Virginians agree it is time to legalize cannabis so that we can finally put people back to work, grow our small businesses, and make some money in this state. You guys, be sure to take just a moment and share out this video with your friends. Tomorrow is Sunday. We're all going to be sitting around the house. Host a couple of watch parties, man. Spread the word about Paula Jean Swearingen. Get five friends on. Now, we would love to introduce West Virginia's very own Richard Ojeda from No Dim Left Behind. Richard? Thank you very much. Uh, first off, you know, why Paula Jean Swearingen? And the reason why is because I want somebody that's going to represent me that's not scared to go to Washington, D.C. and pick a fight. I will tell you that she uh, Shelley Moore Capito has absolutely voted against women. Shelley Moore Capito is nothing more than a lifetime politician. And I'm sick and tired of these lifetime politicians that all the only thing they care about is going to Washington, D.C. and getting a paycheck. I want somebody that's going to represent West Virginia. I want somebody that's going to represent the poor people of the state. I want somebody like Paula Jean Swearingen who has grown up in an area where she knows struggle. She knows the fight for clean water, the fight for clean air, the fight for jobs. And let me tell you something, West Virginia is struggling right now. And right now, for the first time in many years, we have an opportunity. We have an opportunity to take back the Senate. Ladies and gentlemen, they're not even expecting this seat to flip, but we can flip it. The days of going to the polls and casting your vote and that being all you do is over. It's important for every single person that watches this to make sure that you take it upon yourself to make phone calls to your friends. To, be, to make sure that they're registered to vote, and when the time comes, make sure that they have a ride to the polls. And when they go there, make sure that they're voting for Paula Jean Swearingen. Make sure that they're voting for Natalie Klein, for, for, for Kathy Kunkel, for Hillary Turner. We have an opportunity to send four strong women to Washington, D.C. And make no mistake about it, we desperately need that. So for me, it's not even an issue. Paula Jean Swearingen is absolutely the person that I know will go to Washington, D.C. and will pick a fight to make sure that these coal miners in West Virginia can have opportunities to come here so that they can transition when the coal industry is over with. They can transition to jobs that are decent jobs and are not jobs like working in Walmart, which nothing against people that work in Walmart, but when you're making eighty-five dollars to $100,000 a year, 
it's going to be hard to have to transition, and the only thing that's available is 20000 Paula Jean Swearingen is the person that will go to Washington, D.C., and will pick that fight. And because of that, I give her my complete support. My name is Kaylin Barker, and I'm a proud West Virginian. The connection our people have to this state is powerful, but it gives us a unique perspective on the pain and struggle that comes with corporate control. Over the years, our corporate bosses may have changed names, but trust me when I tell you, the company's store remains. West Virginia has a long history of politicians selling us out to the highest bidder and bowing down to industry at the expense of our people. We've been lied to, manipulated, and taken advantage of for far too long. Let me ask y'all, do you trust a politician that's funded by the very corporations that have put us in the situation we're in? Amerisource Bergen, McKesson, Patriot, Peabody, and Massey Energy? I sure as hell don't. West Virginia deserves a senator that's only beholden to us, the people of West Virginia. It's time that we have a senator that'll fight for policies that'll strengthen our unions, not shut their doors. Invest in a modern infrastructure instead of selling us campaign lies. And fund long-term solutions to our addiction epidemic instead of funneling money right back into the hands of Big Pharma. We need Paula Jean in the United States Senate. She'll never sell us out to the company bosses or sell her soul to the company store because Paula Jean ain't no dirty scat. So many in the movement have seen on their social media the iconic blue hats from the Yang Gang. And the Yang Gang has been behind Paula Jean Swearingen from day one. And they've been behind so many other amazing grassroots candidates across the country all driven and inspired by former presidential candidate Andrew Yang. So we, would, we are proudly introducing a conversation with Paula Jean and Andrew Yang. So welcome, Andrew. Welcome to our Unite Our Fight rally. And uh, thank you so much for joining us. And uh, let's just dig in. Um, let's talk about... Um, you know, the stimulus package, UBI, the importance of the Senate, your presidential race. Um, let's just have some shop talk. Would love that. And first, congratulations to you, Paula Jean, for stepping up to represent the people of West Virginia in the Senate. There's so much love and enthusiasm and energy for you and your campaign. People are fed up with the usual. They can sense that Washington is not working. It, do, it takes literally five seconds of someone seeing you or listening to you to say like, wow, this person's genuine in it for the right reasons. One of us, uh, you know, like a, a, a mom who just wants to make things better, uh, an activist who's been in the community for years doing the work. Uh, so I think you've got a great chance to freaking make West Virginia political history mm. and get to the U.S. Senate in just a few short weeks. And let's all make it happen. Uh, I'm pumped. Yeah, thank you so much. And let's let's talk about what's going on with the Senate right now. You know, you run for president and uh, you push for UBI, right? So with everything that's going on with the HEROES Act, uh, my opponent had it sitting on her desk for three months and she didn't do anything about it. We still haven't got relief to Americans right now. So let's talk about a universal basic income. What? How do you think things would be different right now if we had one? People are suffering. Uh, Paula Jean, I, I know that's true in West Virginia as much as it is anywhere else, maybe even more so because West Virginia has had its fair share of economic challenges mm -hmm. even prior to the pandemic. Uh, but this pandemic has eliminated at least 11 million jobs and probably more than that uh, in parts of the economy from travel to restaurants to bars to concerts, conventions, like anything that requires gyms like the gym near me has closed like mm -hmm. anything that required people getting out uh and converging in public places has been devastated mm -hmm. and so the common sense thing to do for all of us 
is to put economic resources into people's hands, like bartenders. Is it the bartender's fault that they all of a sudden had their income cut? Of course not. Right. And the bartender didn't do anything wrong. So we just need to get money into people's hands. The American people see that very clearly. Something like 82% of Americans, including a majority of both Republicans and Democrats, are for cash relief during the pandemic. Mm -hmm. We all got the $1,200 check uh, back in April. It was great, but it was too little uh, and not uh, regular enough. Mm -hmm. So we we should be putting economic resources into people's hands so that we can get through this pandemic. Uh, the recovery is going to be very long and difficult. Mm -hmm. We'd have to face facts that there is no magic snapping back to normal. Uh, so it's a great source of frustration to me and to millions of Americans that our Congress has been so dysfunctional during this time. And that's why we need someone like you, someone who will not play party politics and will take care of the people. Yeah, agreed. Um, before, you know, our Congress and Senate went into recess before Labor Day, before any relief, we still not seeing any relief. And if I would have been in the Senate at that point in time, they would have had to pull me out kicking and screaming, especially for West Virginia. This is one of the poorest and sickest states in the nation. And uh, people were already wondering where their next meal was going to come from before this pandemic even um, was in front of us. So, yeah, it's vitally important that we do take care of the most vulnerable in our society. And a large bulk of our population is elderly. And uh, because of the addiction epidemic, a lot of children are having to live with their grandparents now here in West Virginia. And, you know, it's, it's just all these issues are systemic and West Virginia was already suffering. We need a diverse economy. We need long term solutions to the addiction epidemic. Everybody deserves health care. And uh, we were begging that for those things prior to this pandemic. And you're right. This is not about partisan politics. This is about having people that are actually going to serve us. We have seen a movement of ordinary people, including yourself running for office across the country because we want a, a government that serves us of the people by the people for the people and we don't have that right now we have the bulk of our incumbents are servants to corporations and lobbyists so you know i'm appealing to every west virginian um during this event get out and vote tell your neighbors do everything that you can because we are in the fight for our lives and we do have choices now and we can create a government that actually serves us yeah, to the people of West Virginia, if you did get a stimulus check, uh, imagine that sort of thing happening regularly instead of just once. Right. I mean, that's the kind of thing that we would need to do to give our people a real chance to get through this time uh, together and also rebuild our communities, our Main Street businesses, the hair salons, the restaurants and everything else. So if you enjoyed that stimulus check, why was it only a one time thing? Why are we bailing out giant corporations and banks and airlines that are turning around and firing their people anyway, instead of just putting the money into your hands. And that's the kind of thing that Paula Jean knows is the right move. That's the kind of leadership we need in Washington. Someone with common sense will just look up and say, you know what would be better than plowing billions and billions of dollars into these uh, corporations? We'd just be putting money right into our family's hands. And then uh, the corporations would benefit anyway because we would buy what we need <laughs> right. from the local grocery or from, uh, you know, in some cases, a big company. But hopefully a lot of the money would go to small uh, mom and pop businesses right where we work and live. Mm -hmm. That's the only way a lot of these local businesses are going to survive is if we have the money to spend to keep them open. Yeah, not only does it make moral sense, it makes economic sense. Happier and healthier people are more more productive people. And, uh, you know, the reason we're so poor is because these people make poor choices and they are they don't care if we live or die. My opponent, she's been in Congress for 20 years. She was the first woman to be uh, to be elected um, in the United States Senate to represent the state of West Virginia. She's a mother and grandmother like me. How does she sleep at night when she, you know, her whole state is living in the po impoverished conditions like we are? Um, and like I said, we're in the fight for our lives. We would not be here. I would not be the Democratic nominee for United States Senate if people didn't have to get arrested in her office to be heard. Um, she doesn't care about ordinary West Virginians because she's never 
had to struggle payday to payday. She's never wondered where her next meal is going to come from. She's there because well, of political dynasty, and she just doesn't care about ordinary West Virginians. How can she turn a blind eye to the children dying and starving in this state? And West Virginians need to be asking her. We're in the middle of an election. They were protesting outside her office um, just the other day because uh, – you know, she's not doing her job. I mean, she's she's not even trying to get elected. People are still protesting in front of her office just for a stimulus package right now. It, it's, it's one reason why your race is so important, Paula Jean, is that so here, here's the reality. Um, if you're your opponent, um, you've been in Washington for years, decades, uh, and you don't think that the people have a real choice <laughs> where, where, you know, your seat is concerned because you're like, oh, what are we talking about? It's West Virginia. I, I start out with like a massive advantage. So um, I can ignore a lot of considerations and the people, what are they going to do? Uh, like uh, elect, uh, elect a Democrat here in West Virginia? Like that's her calculation. Um, and the reason why you are poised to make history is that people listen to you and think, you know what, maybe I haven't voted Democratic in the past, but I like Paula Jean. Like she seems like a reasonable, caring person who just wants to make things better. Like that's what your opponent doesn't doesn't see. Uh, and, you know, the, the t thing is, if you're in D.C. for that long, you just start to get really comfortable with the fact that you have a massive cash advantage mm -hmm. and that no one can touch you. Mm -hmm. uh, and you are uh, you are changing the dynamic by just by being human and standing up for the people of West Virginia. I'm sure there are going to be tons of Republicans who uh, are like, you know what, we should give uh, we should give uh, Paula Jean a chance and we should try something different because what has been going on right now has not been working for us. Well, we've had a lot of Republicans come into the fold. We don't have to agree on everything, but we all agree that we need a government that serves us. We know that we need economic diversity in our state. We had over 140,000 coal miners in the 70s. We have less than 50,000 nationwide now. And it's because the market is not going to rebound. And my opponent is a corporate servant. And, you know, she's responsible for the addiction epidemic in our state. We lead in drug overdose deaths right now. And, uh, you know, one of her top donors is the pharmaceutical industry. How can we trust somebody to end a crisis that they help create? And, uh, you know, that's just it. And when I go ask my neighbor for a wrench, he doesn't ask me if I'm a Democrat or a Republican. He brings his wrench and he comes help me, come, comes and helps me. Because, you yeah. know, West Virginians, we are some of the most hospitable people in the world. We have been struggling and fighting in the front lines of our communities to solve our problems. When people like Shelly Moore Capito has been totally out of touch with our day-to-day -day struggles. And that's why it's important to me when I do go to Congress is to make sure that West Virginians and people across the country help me introduce the legislation that I put forth because we need a seat at the table in Washington, D.C. I'm tired of the broken promises. I'm tired of the photo ops. I'm sick and tired of these people turning a blind eye and turning their backs on us, pulling the rug out from underneath us. When we can go out our doors and see every day for the last couple of decades that nothing has changed for us. We've heard Capito Connect for far too long, for five and a half years, and it really shows how disconnected she is. And we've seen state and federal money come into our state to expand broadband, and that money was spent out of state. It needs to be a public utility. It needs to be available to everybody, people on disability, veterans benefits, um, and that are on Social Security. It should be offered free. Low-income families should get it at low cost. There's so many things that need to be there, done. There she is just no doesn't reason care. in 2020 that we have so much, um, uh, so many gaps in our broadband right. around the country in rural areas in particular. And we all know why. It's because these corporations did the math and they said, you know what, I can't make money wiring that last town or la last county. And so they just don't do it. Mm -hmm. uh, and right now our government is so um, underneath the heel of the companies. We're like, well, you, you can't make money, then you shouldn't do it. <laughs> you know? Whereas it would be the easiest thing in the world for the government to be like, you know, how about you wire that last couple of counties or like that last series of towns and you'll get your money back. It'll just take a little while. Mm -hmm. Or maybe the government will even like front the money 
Um, and then the government will get paid back in a little while because you know that eventually it'll pay off. It's just too long a time frame for the companies to make that investment up front. So we have to just help them make that investment uh, and then we'll all be better off for it. So I couldn't agree more, Paul Jean. It's a disgrace that in 2020, there are so many parts of the country that do not have access to high-speed internet. Yeah, we don't have a budgeting problem in this country. We have a moral problem that creates a budgeting problem. And this is one of the richest countries in the world. And even when we're looking at health care, specifically here in West Virginia, and it's been proven, people can look it up. Medicare for all would save this country money. And my, you know, my opponent said, Medicare for all means Medicare for none. What does that even mean? You know, the Industrial Revolution yeah, that was, doesn't make any sense. <laughs> yeah, the Industrial Revolution was built on the backs of West Virginians, their families and surrounding communities. When people turn on their light switches because of the blood of Appalachians, people broke their backs to power this nation. And she's saying that we're going to sell us out again to the highest bidder. We're tired of being collateral damage. Paula Jean, you know what the fundamental tension is, um, and it, it's something that you're helping to change, and I hope I, I can change over time. Uh, it's that so many people have been struggling for so long that when you come to them and you say, hey, you deserve better, we deserve better, we can do better, we can do better for ourselves. Uh, and then the other side's response is, uh, is someone's going to take what you already have or it's mm -hmm. going to get worse for you like like that that's actually the fundamental tug of war uh the other side will be like there's not enough to go around mm -hmm. you know and you and i both know that there's plenty to go around right. in the richest most advanced economy in the history of the world with a with a uh, with a gdp of 22 trillion dollars uh you know um prior to the pandemic even now i'm sure it's 20 trillion or so plus uh, so we know that we can provide health care. We know that we can provide uh, broadband. We know that we can do all these things. But the other side has an advantage because people have just been suffering for so long that they just think like, oh, you know, it's not possible for us to really have better and to do better and to be able to have a better sense of the future for our families. And that's our challenge, yours and mine. We have to let, let them know, look, it's okay to have your head up, to look up and say, you know what? We can do better than this, That's like, right. you know, it's like we should vote this person out. We should get Paula Jean in. Things would actually improve that. That's the message that people are waiting for. It's just that there's like a bit of resistance because they're so used to being disappointed. Yeah, and, and that's why we see, you know, here in West Virginia and the movement across the country of ordinary people standing up and running for office. We had 93 candidates um, to run for office here in West Virginia that did not take corporate PAC money, and 43 of those candidates won. And this is the first time in nation's history, I, I mean, West Virginia's history, that every Democratic nominee for Congress, first, second, third, and the United States Senate are women. And none of us take corporate PAC money. And like I said, we are some of the most hospitable and united people in the world. But I think they, you know, our incumbents have underestimated us. Because one thing when it comes to our children, especially Appalachian women, it's not about partisan politics. If you mess with our young, we're going to come out of the belly of the beast kicking and screaming and we're going to fight. And we have four women right now that are ready to bust the halls of Congress wide open and they're going to fight for, fight for every child in this state and every child across this country. When you mess with our children, we're going to go to war. Yeah, the, the real game is... Uh activating our government so it works for the people mm -hmm. you know and we and we have leaders that um have not really been fighting for the people for a long time and and again the message is that we can do better paula That's jean right. is better than her opponent you no know, like we need someone like paula jean in the u.s senate arguing for you uh fighting for you making sure that if you're businesses are closing because of a pandemic through no fault of yours that you get treated the same way that the airlines or the cruise companies uh, are getting treated. That's what we've been missing. Now I'm a Democrat. I believe in the democratic values, but like I said, we don't have to agree on everything, but we do agree that we need a government that serves us. And thank you so much for endorsing this campaign. Thank you for stepping up and helping, especially during the pandemic. And uh, I wish you and your family the best. And oh, my my pleasure, Paula Jean. Thank you for running. I tell you, like, you know, um, as someone who ran for president, like I know what it takes to be a candidate. And 
I think it's even more admirable for someone like you, the courage it takes for you to run um, on a statewide level in the way you are. Really, I just admire the heck out of it and am inspired by it. And you deserve to win. I believe you will win. Um, so the least someone like me can do is support your campaign. And if you're watching this, please do donate to Paula Jean's campaign so that she has a chance to get the message out over these last number of weeks. Tell anyone you know in West Virginia, I mean, you're probably in West Virginia, so, <laughs> but tell everyone you know in your town, your school district to get out and vote for Paula Jean to give you and your families a true fighter in Washington that actually is in it for the right reasons. Thank you so much. And thank you for taking time out of your day. Hi, I'm Adrian Bell, and I am the Democratic nominee for Congress here in Texas District 14. My friend, Paula Jean Swanger a coal miner's daughter who is passionate about the people of West Virginia. I have come to know and to love the people of West Virginia because of Paula. She talks with such passion about what the people need. And if you want health care, if you want affordable housing, if you want clean air and clean water, then vote for Paula Jean Swearinger. She will represent all of us in the U.S. Senate. As Paula G always says, rise up, Appalachians, unite our fight. Go win, Paula G. I love you. Thank you so much, Adrian Bell. Man, it's so amazing to see a solidarity between Adrian and Paula because they have been friends for years. Adrian calls Paula the realness since they started on their journey in 2017 with brand new Congress. Adrian almost won in Texas in 2018 and we know that she can take out randy weber this time in 2020 and paula jean and her are going to make an amazing team on capitol hill now we would like to introduce hello june with the song soft love Scatter my ashes across the state on every doorstep. I want to leave a little piece of me. I'll let my boots off till I'm safe. I'll shut my eyes till I'm somewhere golden. And I don't trust any man sitting next to me. You were stronger than we ever knew. We get up again. Who would ever guess?
knows how this one ends Oh, tomorrow Tomorrow I hate you Tomorrow 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 I hate you Tomorrow Hello everyone, I'm Amy Valella. I'm so excited to be joining Paula Jean Swearingen and all of you tonight. My story is probably very similar to many working class people. I have struggled through poverty, homelessness, and was a single mother trying desperately to provide for my children. There were times I had to choose between paying for the utilities and paying for food. I had been told from childhood the same false narrative that if I only worked hard enough, my family would be safe and that I would make it, only to have to endure the excruciating pain of holding my daughter Shalin as she died a painful and needless death because of our barbaric for-profit healthcare system. You see, our system and politics put corporate profits over people. This is the crux of the issues that plague our political system. It's why it seems that nothing ever gets done. Why we have people in this country dying from environmental issues and from a lack of health care. It's why the working class are struggling so hard. Why our standard of living has decreased substantially over the last few decades. I support Paula Jean Swearingen because I know she will be a fierce advocate for the people in the Senate. Her lived experience is invaluable. She has seen the suffering. She has lived through the suffering and she is tired of the suffering. She will lead the fight for healthcare, housing, a livable wage and environmental protections. We have all seen this failed system we are forced to navigate. Most of our leaders have been bought and paid for by corporations who solely exist to increase the wealth of their shareholders. But we have also seen recently the election of progressives that are solely beholden to the people. This is our chance to get a senator that will join the others in changing the discourse in this country and put a fight for the justice that is so desperately needed. This isn't the time for political talking points or platitudes. What we need now is a representative that truly understands the plight facing many in our country and has the personal and political willpower to stand up and truly fight back. I look forward to seeing my sister, Paula Jean Swearingen, sworn in as a Senator to the United States. Amy always reminds us why it's so important that every single person in this country has health care as a human right. And her fight for Medicare for All has taken her across the country, and she stood in solidarity with Paula Jean Swearingen in this fight. Now we would like to introduce who I've heard is the incredible Marianne Clater. Marianne is running for West Virginia State Auditor. And you know what? She's the only candidate running who has a degree in accounting, which to me seems pretty important. Thank you. Marianne? Uh, thank you. My name is Marianne Clater, and yes, I'm running for West Virginia State Auditor in the great state of West Virginia. And Paula and I are both coal miners' daughters, and we're proud of it. And a lot of people may not understand what it means to be a coal miners' daughter and the strength that we've learned from looking at our families and what they have endured. But in here in West Virginia, we are fighting against a political system that is stacked against the working class. But we are fighters. When I left the auditor's office in uh, 2014, I left to take care of my son, who was paralyzed from the neck down. And the doctors told me I would never be able to take care of him at home. 
Well, you know what I did? I looked those doctors in the eye and I said, my son would want me to fight for him. And I managed to take care of him for five years, four years of which was on a ventilator. So what you need to know about West Virginia women is that we fight for what's right. We stand up for those who other people might want to turn their backs on. And that's what Paula Jean will do for us. So I will need everyone. We have got to get stand together, stand strong, and understand that in West Virginia, we have a political system where there are three members of the Moore family running for different levels of government. People are, are raising their children to be politicians. Well, it's time to end that type of dynasty. We have got to stand together. We have got to do what's right. We need everyone's help. Um, she told you, I am the only person running for state auditor that actually has an accounting degree. People just prejudge us to think who can win and who cannot win. Well, I'm telling you right now, we will fight for West Virginians. We will win this race, but we can only do it with your help. Today, do not put off till tomorrow what we all can do today. And that means calling all your friends and all of your neighbors, talking to people that you may not feel comfortable to talk to. You've got to step outside your comfort zones if we are going to make real changes change with people that will fight for us, fight for a livable wage, fight for families to be able to have health care. It is a hard fight, but we can do it. I told you I was able to take care of my son for five long years. So you can do this. You can step outside your comfort zone. Help Paula. I need you to flood her campaign with funds. We all need funds. And whenever you get finished giving all that you can to Paula, I would appreciate if you could spread a little love my way because we are in the fight for our lives. But like I said before, West Virginia women are, are strong and we will fight to the end. No matter if someone tells us no, we will say, yes, it can be done. Yes, we will win. And if we stand strong together, because we're not taking corporate PAC money. So that involves your active participation in this campaign. And that's how we'll win. That's how we will show them how it's done. That's how we will get working class people into office doing what's right for each and every citizen and not just those at the top that we will care about the person that's working as a waitress in, a, in the restaurants, the person that's working at Walmart. We will care about everyone, not just those that can throw thousands of dollars into campaigns. So stand strong, stand together, do what's right, do your part so that you can say, I helped to make this happen and just continue, continue to encourage your neighbors and friends. I thank you. Let's make accounting great again in West Virginia. Hello, my name is Rusty Williams and I'm the patient advocate on the West Virginia Medical Cannabis Advisory Board and a candidate for the House of Delegates here in West Virginia's 35th district. And I just wanted to say that it's a pleasure to be a part of this virtual event today. And uh, I'm proud to stand here in solidarity with my friend, Paula Jean Swearingen. And for all of you watching, um, I just want, I kind of want to put a, a human story and a personal face onto this race and why it matters so much. Um, I've told my story a thousand times and if you've heard it before, I apologize. But in 2012, I went from uh, running a small business and living a very happy life to uh, wondering where I was going to uh, sleep and where my next meal was gonna come from, all because I made the mistake of getting sick in the richest country in the history of the world. When I was diagnosed with cancer, I didn't have insurance or the resources to pay for the emergency surgery I needed, so I had to start, you know, start a search. And after five weeks of constantly jumping over every bureaucratic hoop they could put in front of me, um, after I was denied three separate occasions, I finally just had to throw in the towel. Um, I accepted the fact that cancer was gonna take me out. I had to call a family meeting and explain that to my family. And it was one of the most difficult conversations I've ever had. 
fortunate for me, um, you know, my mother is a fighter and she wasn't about to give up and she kept reaching out to people, kept making phone calls, and we were connected with the West Virginia Catastrophic Illness Commission. And within a week of contacting that entity, my surgery was scheduled and I was able to finally get some pain relief. Fast forward a month and a half, um, you know, surgery's happened. I'm going through the recovery process, thinking that, you know, in a few weeks, I'm going to get back to my life and everything's going to be good. Well, then I woke up in excruciating pain again and had to go back to the hospital, um, only to find that in the time I spent fighting bureaucrats when I should have been fighting cancer, the cancer spread and now I have an inoperable tumor that I'm going to have to deal with forever. Um, I am a walking pre-existing condition and with this vote, my health care is on the line. Um, I, I remember very vividly about two o'clock in the morning in 2017 when the Senate was debating whether to uh, strip pre-existing condition, uh, pre condition protections away from patients. Uh, you may have remembered when John McCain came in and very famously killed that with a thumbs down. That felt great. It was, it was a moment of elation to know that I was going to go to sleep that night without having, to, you know, without fearing uh, losing my health care. But it was also very uh, upsetting because I remember the look on Senator Capito's face when she cast her yes vote and it was just like, like she was walking in the park. It was no big deal. And um, that was upsetting to me. That is something that I know for a fact that if Paula Jean Swearingen had been representing me in that seat, my, pre, my, my health care would not have been on the line um, in that manner. So to me, this is absolutely crucial. This is one of the most uh, important races in the state of West Virginia this election cycle, I believe. And I hope that on November 3rd, you'll all join me when you go into your polling places and let's give Shelley Moore Capito the big thumbs down and send Paula Jean Swearing into Washington, D.C. to represent the people of West Virginia. We need a true representative and that's exactly who Paula Jean is. And again, I am proud to stand here in solidarity with, uh, with Paula Jean. I know she's a fighter. Uh, she will not back down from anyone and um, she will always have our best interests at heart. So thanks again for allowing me to participate in this event. I couldn't be more proud to stand with my friend Paula Jean and I hope you'll stand with us on November 3rd. We heard the stories of Mary Ann Clater. We heard the struggles of West Rusty Williams, but you know what we also heard? We heard about their vision. We heard about the changes that can be made when regular working people that have walked in our shoes and not elitist are running for office. So please go out and vote for them. Donate to them. Let's make these last 24 days count because that's all we got. That's all we got in 2020 is the change maker. So again, vote for Rusty Williams, vote for Marianne Clater. Let's bring some fire to the state house in West Virginia. So we'd also love to introduce Senator Nina Turner in a conversation that she had with Paula Jean. So hi everyone, we have another exciting guest and this is Senator Nina Turner. Um, thank you so much for joining our Unite Our Fight rally. And we're just gonna have some back and forth conversation about the importance of the United States Senate in this race. And, you know, West Virginia, we're in the fight of our lives and we can make change now at the ballot box. We have so many great candidates to vote for this cycle and folks like Senator Turner has endorsed our campaign and has really showed up uh, people across the country You've seen it tonight and, uh, you know, it's on us now. We have all the support and we've had so, so many people get behind us. So it's up to West Virginia now. We have to sh show up and vote and make sure we put the government back into the hands of the people. How you doing, Senator? I'm all right, PJ. How are you? Uh, tired, but good. <laughs> yeah, you're doing a lot. Um, well, Paula Jean, I call her PJ, I call her my sister, but Paula Jean, make sure y'all check off that box when you go vote. It's a serious undertaking to be running for the U.S. Senate, and I commend you so much for your courage and your dedication to your people. And your background in particular is the type of background that we need in the U.S. Senate. You fondly, I mean, when I first met you, 
to know you proudly you talk about being a coal miner's daughter proudly take the experiences of your people everywhere that you go and that is one of the many reasons that you are going to make a magnificent u.s senator standing up for the people so west virginia we need you to come through come through west virginia i've done several text messages where i use that term come through as mm -hmm. apology as you laid out you have support from all over this country ultimately west virginia has to finish the final leg of the race and that is to get out there and vote for you and i love paula jean as you laid out that the people in front of the pain should be in front of the power and that is so true a part of the problems and the challenges in the congress is that it has become such an elitist body period people who are out of touch with the people's pain with their hopes with their dreams because everything does not have to be defined by pain but the totality the wholeness of a of, a, of an experience is both bitter and it's both sweet and you need people like you who come from a very working class background who will get there and not forget where you come from and to understand that behind every policy there's flesh and blood we're not talking about widgets we're talking about right. real people who need real solutions who need their government to act on their behalf and you are such a leader you're already a servant leader without the u.s senate senate title you've been out there on the front lines for the people for a very long time this is not new to you and so with that enhancement of that title apology you know i often say titles are good but purpose is better and yes, you are somebody that your purpose the title is only an enhancement to your purpose and not the other way around that is so vitally important and that your win in west virginia is not just for west virginians it will be for people like my the people i used to serve in ohio it will be for people like the people in california the people in washington state illinois this going to name it this is a global this is a global undertaking and i don't know if you kind of thought about that in a deep way the symbol of what it will mean both symbolically but also in real action terms for you to win this seat and the type of voice that you're going to bring to that table is going to mean so much to to people beyond west virginia so west virginia you got a lot on your shoulders because you're not just doing this for you i know it's a heavy load but it's your load to carry and you can carry it as paula jean laid out you are resilient and so you need to send a resilient ass kicking <laughs> Well, you know, the thing is, we need somebody that we don't have to get arrested to be heard. You know, we had people with my opponent was throwing paper airplanes, begging for health care over the top of her office door. I saw that video, Paula G. I, yeah, let's talk. I saw that. And they, they, and I'm sorry, because just seeing that video, it made me, I won't say I feel felt ill. I don't want to exaggerate. It saddened me. Because here you had a staffer, and I'm not blaming the staffer. Staffer is only doing what they're told. But that's the people's house. That's the people's office. She has that office because taxpayers' dollars pay for that office, yet they wouldn't even open the damn door. That did something to me. Not to yeah. open the door. And she's not even opening doors now. Metro News told me the other day that she is refusing now to debate. What does that say? To West Virginia, you have to get arrested in my office. You have to beg. But now, when I have, you know, she has to face an ordinary West Virginian. You know, I am the Democratic nominee. We are at the top of the ticket outside of the presidential race. This is one of the most important seats for West Virginia, and she will not face me as a coal miner's daughter. This is a grandma fight. Grandma, come out and fight grandma because you know. I know what it's like. It's just like our campaign is led by West Virginians. You know, she touts coal. She's done everything she can for coal barons, but she's never not done a damn thing for coal miners. And you know, my campaign manager is a black hat coal miner and a trucker, and he has fought just as hard for West Virginia as I have, and, and run an incredible campaign. And now she a campaign led mostly by West Virginians. She can't even come out and talk about this race. What is she afraid of? She's afraid that people are going to really learn that we are actually talking about bringing a vision to, to West Virginia. 
You know, I don't have all the answers. I'm not the end all be all. You know, I can introduce legislation. I can go with people in the, you know, into Congress with like Cori Bush and other people that actually want to be people servants. She's afraid that people are going to know and Republicans are going to know that she's nothing but a corporate servant. Shame on her. How does she sleep at night? Yeah, it is a shame that she's doing this. West Virginia, you need to know this, that your fellow citizens went to the Capitol to give to get audience with the current senator, and they refused to even open the door. It's one thing to say that the senator is not available. It's another thing to not open the door. Think about that, your door, the door that your taxpayers pay for. So let's do away with that. Obviously, she don't want to deal with the people. So West Virginia, send her on home and send Paula Jean to the U.S. Senate because she has time for the people. She will listen to the people. She will continue to serve the people just in another capacity. And I say in another capacity, Paula Jean, because you are serving right now. You're an activist. You are a servant leader in your own right. Becoming a U.S. Senator will give you another level of opportunity to be able to serve the people. Somebody that understands that health care is a human right. Mm -hmm. Somebody and that's that the thing. I didn't plan on being a servant. I just got mad and angry and I'm a mother. And like I said, I'm a grandmother and I have give up time away from my children, begging people like her to do their job. And this is about taking their job because they're not doing it because we are West Virginia. We are resilient and we're resilient enough that if she ain't going to do her job, we're coming after it. This is the people's campaign. This is a movement about the people. This is about West Virginia saying, hey, we're not taking it anymore. I think the biggest advantage we've had here in West Virginia is being underestimated by these people because they didn't think that we were going to get to this moment and get to this far, but they need to know too, we're in it for the long haul. And if this movement is not done and we are going to make sure that they're held accountable once and for all you were on a mission from the first time you ran for the, the the u.s senate and you're still on that same mission which is to bring government closer to the people to use that power the people's power to bring them the resources that they need to be able to not only be in survival mode because you talk a lot about but people should be able to thrive That's before right. they live. shouldn't have to live their entire lives in survival mode they should be able to thrive and to get from survival to thriving will take leadership from all levels of government and particularly in the united states senate where you run every six years you have the breath and the opportunity to be able to really work deliberately on behalf of the people and not have to think about running, 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 running. You have the time that you need to come up with policy to build relationships, both on the state, regional and local levels of government. It's not just what you're going to be able to do on the federal level. It's also what that that U.S. Senate title will allow you to do in partnership and relationship with your sisters and brothers who serve West Virginians on other levels of government as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and that's just it. And I want to thank you so much, uh, you know, even for your public service. I know that you have really, really worked hard. And I, I'm just incredibly proud to be in this movement with such incredible people that just they're doing it with heart. And I know that everything that you've done, um, it's 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 tiring. Um, and and just thank you, Senator Turner, for 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 your sacrifice and your public service. And we need more of us. We need more people like us that are real, ready to fight. And, you know, West Virginians are fighters. And so this is just, we got to do this, y'all. I mean, we have got to show up at the polls. Um, I know that it's felt like for so long, you're just complacent. Oh, well, this is just another politician running. No, no, it's, it's, I'm not. I'm an ordinary coal miner's daughter. And, you know, I, this country girl, you have said it over and over, does not want to go to D.C. I'm going to D.C. to raise six tons of hell because ain't nobody done it for us. And this is about us. And it's making sure that future generations have a chance, not only in West Virginia, but across this country. These people, it's a big club and we're not allowed in it. And it is our government and it's time to take our government back. That's right. Go on and kick down that 
door, Paula Jean. That's right. And I ain't going to be locking their doors. I'm going to be giving out my phone number. And this is good. You know, when we get all these good people elected, it's going to change everything moving forward. I'm not going to be just working when we're in session. I want to be home and still in the front lines of my communities, making okay. sure that people's needs are met for a change. People will not, these, these people will not be able to go back to this place in moments because we're going to hold them accountable and we're going to show what true representation should be like. It's time to set an example and not only take their jobs, but set an example and show them how our government should work. That's right. True servant leadership. So West Virginia, please come through for Paula Jean and for our sisters and brothers in other parts of the country who will get an opportunity to join in with this unity celebration. Phone a friend. If you got friends or relatives in West Virginia, phone them. If you can give another dollar, another $5, another $10, another $27, please do so as we have less than 30 days to get Paula Jean over the finish line on behalf of the people. She needs your time, your talent, and your treasure. And we can do all of that in a virtual way. So visit her website. If you do not live in West Virginia and you cannot vote, you can make a phone call. You can put invest seed money into this campaign. But let's us collectively do what we know we must do and what we can do to elect this champion of the people and send her to the US Senate, baby, to run. What do you say, Paul? You're gonna raise six levels, six stuff. <laughs> Hell, for good. That is Paula Jean. So Paula Jean, it's my honor to be in this fight with you. And it is certainly my honor to be supportive of your campaign. I have donated to your campaign, so I'm not asking people to do something that I have not done. I'm asking you to give what you can, your time, your talent, and your treasure to help this public servant get to the U.S. Senate. Paula Jean, we need you there. We need us all. And there's power in numbers. And yeah. we are going to make sure that every child has a fighting chance moving forward, just as long as we keep down this path. And, you know, it's, we should be looking at these campaigns, just like it, you know, any job, um, when, when, you know, just like any, any resume or any job application somebody puts out, this is like the longest job interview that I've ever went through. And it's time that we vet our candidates and make sure that we have true representation and quit believing the lies. Anybody can give a good speech. Anybody can show up for a photo op, but we need people that have been standing shoulder to shoulder with us in the front lines of our communities and solving our problems already and making sure that we do have a seat at the table and in, in, in things that impact our lives every day. That's exactly right. Start checking receipts. If these right. leaders are not living up to what they promised, then they gotta go, plain and simple. It's your power, it's your office, and you allow people to hold that power and to hold that, that office for a period of time. But it's not their seat. It's not their office. It's your office. It's not their tax dollars. It's your tax dollars. So why not send somebody to the U.S. Senate who understands that? Paula Jean understands that. And, once and you're gets a representative. I mean, it's it, that your government, but you're a representative. These people work for us. Right. And if I get this get this job, I will be working for the people that I'm supposed to serve, not corporations and lobbyists. Amen. There it is. All right, S and T. Thank you so so very much. Let's continue to unite our fight, y'all, and have a good night. And thank you for taking the time. I know you're really busy. Yeah, it's an absolute pleasure, Paula Jean. You take good care. All right. Thank you. Woo, man, Paula Jean and Nina Turner always bring the fire. Senator Turner can spit it, and she can tell you exactly why we need change in this country. And when her and Paula get together, they're a force to reckon with. Speaking of Paula Jean, we have the future U.S. Senator for West Virginia, Paula Jean Swearingen, who's going to tell us how we're gonna unite our fight here in this state, how we're gonna show unity across the country and how we're gonna make true and lasting change. Hi y'all, I am so humbled by the solidarity that we've seen here tonight within this movement across the country. Ordinary people just like me are rising up and running for office because it is time for ordinary people to do extraordinary things. I am humbled that West Virginians have chosen me to be your de Democratic nominee for United States Senate. 
Y'all know my story. It's our story. I'm a poor coal miner's daughter and granddaughter. I understand what it's like to feel left behind and abandoned by elect elected officials. Like the rest of us, I have lived through the years of lies, corruption, and empty re-election promises. West Virginians deserve to hear from all candidates on the ticket. But Shelley Moore Capito is so spineless and out of touch that she refuses to do her public duty and give voters a debate. West Virginians are resilient. We work hard. We pride ourselves on surviving. Right now, communities are trading bushels and filling canning jars. We take care of our neighbors. We not only put food on our own tables, but we put food on each other's. Taking care of each other is a West Virginia tradition. We don't throw each other under the bus, and it's time to get rid of politicians that do. We are tired of begging for breadcrumbs, and it's not a matter if we deserve a better economy, health care, infrastructure, broadband, and a good future for us, our children and grandchildren. We have earned it, and we are demanding it. These elite politicians in D.C. might be owned by corporations, but they don't own us. We have the power to make our own decisions. It is time, y'all, to invest in ourselves. It would be an honor for me to be a public servant and earn your vote. West Virginians deserve true representation. We are in a fight for our lives. This isn't a football game. It's bigger than red or blue. People are struggling and dying here, and it's time to have true public servants. I am ready to fight for policies that will fund long-term solutions to the addiction epidemic, build a modern infrastructure so we can put people back to work and strengthen workers' rights. The labor movements were born in Appalachia, and if our out-of-touch so-called representatives think that it's going to stop here, they are wrong. The fight started by Mother Jones, Joe Hill, the miners of Blair Mountain and Mate One continues to this day. These politicians may have forgotten where they come from, but we haven't. We will continue to fight like hell for the respect, dignity, and hardworking, uh, the, the respect and dignity that hardworking Appalachians deserve. Every single person casting a vote is taking West Virginia's future into their hands. We have the power to choose this time, y'all. We are ready to bust the halls of Congress wide open and show that West Virginians are tired of begging to be heard. While Shelley Moore Capito is standing behind locked doors and filling her pocketbooks with dark money, West Virginians have been standing together and we are demanding better. This time, voters have a reason to go to the polls. Who better to serve us than us? We have been working to solve our problems in our communities. We have been fighting for our people and our families without the help of our elected officials for decades. It is time to make clear demands. If they will not listen to us in their ivory towers, it's time to tear them down and make sure that we have a space and a voice. When I go to Washington, I will never lock my doors or turn off my phones. I will be available to every constituent. When I go to Capitol Hill, I will make sure West Virginians have a seat at the table and helping write legislation that we introduce. I will never take a dime of dark money. The only people I'm beholden to are you. This campaign is funded and powered by the people and not big corporations and lobbyists. We, can, we have grown to expect corruption in Washington, but voters have the power to change our government. We can take our state back at the ballot box. I will never sell my soul to the company store. I love West Virginia, and I'll never sell her out because I'll never be a damn dirty scab. Thank you. Thank you, Paula Jean. Paula Jean ain't no damn dirty scab, that's for sure. She's going to go all the way up to Capitol Hill and make a difference. And you know what? It's so much bigger than just the presidential race this year. We have important races all the way from the top of the ticket of the U.S. Senate all the way down to our school boards. And we need to be paying attention. And we need to be casting a vote. And you know what? Paula Jean's race is one of the most important 
in this country because we are talking about our Senate, our Senate that has turned its back on fairness, our Senate that has turned its back on democracy and has forgotten checks and balances and that leaves their job up to the Supreme Court, up to the president, when they're the ones who are supposed to be legislating for the people and we're the ones paying their paycheck. So you know what? We're asking you to holler from the hollers for Paula Jean. Get out there, tell your friends, tell your family, Give people rides to the polls. Remind people there's only two days left to register to vote. So get out and register. Apply for your early ballots. Make sure that you know where early voting starts in your counties. And this is how we do it. And another thing that you can do is share this out. Everything that we've said tonight, all these candidates that we've heard from in the state of West Virginia, because what we're doing here and what Paula is doing is building unity. So even if you can give just a dollar, a dollar makes a difference. Paula is people funded. You know, she's not funded by millionaires, billionaires, and corporations, but every dollar that we spend can help get that ride to the polls, can help make that one of those 250,000 phone calls we still have to make before the next 24 days pass. It helps us pay for ad buys. It helps us compete with GOP super PACs that are out there spending millions of dark money on advertising. So if you can give a dollar today, go to www.paulagene.com and help us out. Paula, can you tell us just a little bit about your state and uh, tell us how voters can go out and vote for you? Uh, you can fill out your absentee ballot application, y'all, and thank you so much for joining us tonight. Um, you can call your county clerk and fill out your absentee. They will send you your absentee ballot application. It's not like it was before. You won't be getting those automatically in the mail. So if you want to vote by mail, you have to call your county clerk to get that. And check where your local polling station is. Our folks across the state have done really well with COVID and making sure people are safe if you choose to go to the polls. But we are in the fight for our lives. And I want to thank you all for turning out. West Virginia, we can do this, y'all. We should not be divided. Like I said, this is not a football game. We are in the fight for our lives, and we have a lot of folks now that just want to be public servants. I'd cut my leg off for my children and my, and my grandchild, and this grandmother just wants to go to Washington to make sure that future generations have a secure future for a change. Yeah. So um, just a little bit more about um, what we're doing here. You know, Paula Jean Swearingen was the first in West Virginia to run on no corporate PAC money. She has been leading this fight in West Virginia and inspired hundreds and hundreds of people to step up and run for office, not just in this state, and across, but across the country. But we can't make that change. We can't make that change unless you guys get out and vote. So thank you to each and every one of you who tuned in tonight. Thank you to each and every one of you who are supporting Rusty Williams, Corey Bush, Lacey Clay, Marianne Clater, and the four powerful women of West Virginia Can't Wait who are moving on trying to fight for federal offices. So if you can, cast your vote before November 3rd. If you can, give that dollar. If you can, sign up and volunteer. Help us reach voters across the state. Um, canvassing in COVID isn't easy. <laughs> Knocking doors isn't easy. So we're having to do that safely. We're having to do that remotely. But guys, join us. And like we said, holler from the holler because we deserve true representation. Thank you guys again. Share this out. And tell your friends, host a watch party, and we really appreciate every single one of you. And like Paula said, this election is in all of our hands. I was born in these hills. So was my grandfather who lost his life to black lung disease. Coal miners today are still risking their lives to feed their families. They fight over pay, their health care, the ability to even retire at all. And it's not just them. 
It's teachers, nurses, small business owners, farmers, blue collar citizens, fighting for a right to live in this state that we call home. Those decades of abuse are showing their effects with every business that closes its doors. For every child that we raise to leave these hills, not because they want to, it's because they have to. We're rolling back environmental regulations that were written by the blood of Appalachians. The same water that baptized us is now giving us cancer. Our system is broken. How long are we gonna sit back and take it? How long before we actually take it? This moment is about all of us. It is time to have a campaign for U.S. Senate in West Virginia ran by the people. We are shutting down career politicians by not accepting corporate PAC money and never hiding from a debate. This campaign is funded 100% by small contributions. Grassroots efforts that will build a movement for all of us. We will have Medicare for all. We will have the clean environment that we deserve. We won't back down until our workers are paid and protected. Our public schools will be fully funded and supported. Big Pharma will be the ones paying for the devastation they caused in our communities. That is why we need you, West Virginians, to join us to put our state where it needs to be. I am Paula Jean Swearingen, candidate for United States Senate, and I approve this message.